thank you for taking the time today to join us for this quick 30 minute uh, information webinar on our Diploma of Leadership and Management. Uh, this will be the fourth year that the diploma will be running. Today, the audience participation is going to take up about 20 minutes of this 30 minutes. Now, to allow you to do this, I'd like each of you to grab your smartphone, if hoping you have one in front of you, and if you open a web browser and simply type in slido.com, that's S-L-I-D-O.com, um, and hit enter, that will take you to uh, the page for Slido, and it'll ask you to put an event code in, and the event code is simply myafma, M-Y-A-F-M-A, -A, as you can see on screen. Now, what this allows you to do is ask questions at any stage throughout the presentation. And uh, what's great about having it on your phone is you can see everyone else's questions. When you put your first question in, you'll have the option to insert your name, or you can just leave it blank and it'll be an anonymous question. The nice part as you're going through and you can see everyone's questions going uh, on screen, you can actually hit the like button and the most like question goes to the top of the pile. So we, we don't all have to ask the same question. If someone's already asked it, then just vote their question to the top of the pile. Um, ask those questions throughout the presentation because once we get to the back end, all those questions will come up on screen and uh, everyone will work our way through it. So that's just slido.com and uh, the event code is myafma. Our speakers for today, um, and uh, excuse the headshot of Darren Holland, uh, it's an old photo that, that's the best I could grab. Um, Darren's the course facilitator for Swinburne University. Darren's had a, a long background in this industry, uh, working with Ford and I believe Mazda uh, throughout the many years. Uh, Dave Allen, uh, the logistics manager of Parks Victoria, is a previous graduate. Uh, Dave also worked for uh, Melbourne City Council prior to that, and he's with us today to talk about his experiences. And then we have uh, Joel Reed, uh, who's the uh, engineer project manager for fleet and protective equipment for the CFA, and uh, he's had various other roles. So he'll tell you about his experience. Uh, Joel completed the course in 2020, which was the first time we were fully online due to COVID. Um, but remiss of me, at every APMA event, we recognise our corporate partners. So I'd like to thank uh, NTT, Data Fig Tree Systems, BP, Redbrook, Geotab, Auto Roller, and of course, Petters, Brakes and Suspension. Now, let's get on with it. AFMA, a little, little bit about AFMA. Most people on the line would understand who we are. We've existed for 26 years. We're a not-for-profit peak industry body and are entirely self-funded. 65% um, of our revenue comes from our annual conference, which did not happen last year, and uh, we're hope, very much hopeful it'll trans it will happen on uh, 20th and 21st of May. We have around 500 members across Australia, New Zealand, Asia. 70% uh, of those members are what we call corporate members. Um, so they're the guys who manage or own their own fleet of vehicles, and they're about equally split between um, government and non-government agencies. The other 30% uh, of members are suppliers looking to provide products and or services. So AFMA's primary role is to promote fleet management as a true profession. We do that in a number of ways and we'll talk about that in a second. We have a, an advocacy and education role and uh, of course we provide members with a range of tools and publications. Um, the whole of life cost calculator probably being the most popular tool which is integrated with Redbook data. Ongoing professional development is the most important part of, of what AFMA does. Uh, it's all about linking people and knowledge and creating meaningful outcomes. We have our professional development forums. We do two or three of those in each capital city throughout the year. Last year, we only had uh, the one round face-to-face -face in most states, although per, in WA, we had face-to-face -face the entire year. We have our Fleet Industry Awards, uh, which is part of our the, the networking dinner at our conference, where we highlight best practices across um, Fleet Manager of the Year environment, Environmental Award, and we also do a Safety Award. We have the conference itself. We have some online courses and learning paths. And here's what we're about to talk about today, which is the Diploma of Leadership and Management. 
which is managed by Swinburne University. Underpinning all of this um, ongoing professional development is the Global Fleet Networking Consortium, which we're a member of with the uh, the US, China, UK, um, etc. So now the first uh, topic is really around the Diploma of Leadership and Management. Some of the icons here, some of these bullet points I'm just going to cover off. What makes this diploma a little unique is that it's been contextualised for fleet and automotive industries and um, the assignments and the assessments have real world focus. It has a proven return on investment, which is much to do about the, um, the workplace project, which is part of your final assessment. There's 12 uh, subjects. It's virtually delivered, so there are no boundaries. You can be on holidays if you need, if something clashes. You can be working anywhere in the globe. As long as you can get a web browser, you can be participating. Um, durations around eight months, starting late March, and the price is 5,300. Uh, normally, Swinburne are charging 7,500 for this diploma. That's a, enough for me. I'm now going to introduce uh, the facilitator, Darren Holland, and uh, I'll be back. Darren, so over to you. Thank you, Mace, and I will update that headshot for you as well. So, um, just on behalf of uh, Swinburne University, I'd just like to thank you for your time this afternoon. Uh, over the past four years, I've had the honour and the privilege of designing, contextualising, as uh, Mace put it, um, the program for AFMA. And it's been great working with um, not only Mace, but also Hanu and uh, Mona Lisa as well and the team at, at AFMA to put this program together. And also the, the team at Swinburne as well with um, with Simone and, and Ryan as well. Now, over the past four years, um, we've designed, uh, delivered and assessed, uh, obviously, this program and the Diploma of Leadership and Management uh, for AFMA over that period. And really what it is, it's designed to help you personally and your personal development, that's a really key one. We focus on you and your own personal development, development as a leader and a manager in the fleet industry. And obviously that then comes down to your own professional development. You know, how are you a, a greater leader within the industry and obviously within your own organisation itself? But also what it does is it delivers two key items onto your CV. The first one is obviously the, um, the, the diploma itself. You know, there's nothing better than having that certification on your um, CV and obviously from an internationally recognised university in Swinburne. But also, and one thing that uh, Mace did touch on there, was the delivery of the project. Um, and that's one of the things that can sit on your CV as, as really as a great uh, proof of the work that you've done, but also the return on investment and the value that you've driven back to the organisation. Now, one of the things that um, I know that Dave and Joel will talk about later, and they'll hear a lot from me, is this concept of, of ROI, ROI. You're going to invest, obviously, money, you're going to invest time and invest yourself into the program. And one of the things that Mace will attest to is over the year, we've seen some wonderful project presentations, and they they really do um, come across a wide variety of topics. And really, if we add up all the return on investment back into, the, into their organisations, it would certainly go well into the millions. Um, as uh, in terms of the actual program itself and what we touch on over that eight month period, you can see the, the list of subjects here on the screen that, that Mace has put up. But a couple of things that we want to focus on, we start with you and we start with your own personal development. And then what we do is we think about the operations of the business and from an operational aspect, how do you become more effective and efficient? Then what we start to think about a little bit more in terms of your own leadership, and we actually start with emotional intelligence. And one of the great things with AI is that I see is that some of the people who do undertake this have what we call an epiphany. And that's actually a word that I got from a, uh, uh, from a participant in the program a few years ago, where they really thought about how they changed themselves personally and professionally as well. As we finish up, we certainly focus on you as a leader and you as a leader in the fleet industry, you as a leader in your organisation. And finally, we finish up with communicating the influence because it's a, it's a vital important part of what we do. As uh, May uh, spoke about, the program goes for about eight months. Uh, I know that um, you know, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of work that goes into it, but there's no doubt that the more, more that you put into it, the more that you get out of it. And I, I still remember the um, presentation given by Brad Phone that was done at the uh, conference a couple of years ago. We talked about the effort that he put in in terms of the words that he wrote, the kilometres he travelled and everything else. But there's no doubt that if you spoke to Brad here today, he would say that, that you know, he got a massive return on investment on that work that he put in. So from our point of view, um, we will kick off in late March. We're looking forward to another cohort uh, coming through the program. It's an exciting program. 
um, it's a fun program and one that you'll get a lot out of both uh, personally and professionally. So what I'd like to do is just hand over to Dave Allen, who's one of our alumni, um, who will talk through uh, his experience with the program as well. So thanks, Mace, and thanks to all of you for, for your time this afternoon. And uh, I'll hand over to, uh, to Dave. Uh, thanks very much, Darren. And uh, I'd, I'd concur with everything you've said there about the particular uh, program, the diploma itself. Um, I got to know AFMA uh, very well in my time working for City of Melbourne. Uh, we were fortunate enough to uh, win the Fleet Environmental Award uh, in 2014 due to some work we had done um, with, in, with Fleet Innovation in bringing in um, electric and hybrid vehicles into our, our, um, our pool uh, of fleet vehicles. So I attended uh, AFMA conferences on a regular basis and felt that uh, I got a great deal as a fleet manager from, from being involved with AFMA, but I hadn't had any formal qualifications as a fleet manager uh, since I'd finished university uh, a long time ago. Um, the course itself, uh, we had about 12 contact days at Swinburne. Uh, we had uh, contact days where we had two days in a row. So you actually got back into the program relatively easily. The time it took to complete the projects, I think there were 10, 10, um, 10 uh, projects that we needed to have completed in that eight month period, took a relatively uh, long time to complete, to, 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 be to be fair and to be thorough with the process. Um, and I think looking back, may have taken probably more time than I had allowed or thought that it would have. But each one of the uh, workplace projects that was put together by Swinburne and by Darren really did uh, assist me in my role as a fleet manager at City of Melbourne and assist me personally in, in my personal development. It, it, it makes you ask questions of yourself and how you lead others, how you manage people, um, and I guess how to get the best out of yourself. Um, recently, I joined Parks Victoria as logistics manager. I've uh, been with Parks now for about 18 months, and I've got no doubt at all that I would not have been successful in obtaining this role had I not have completed this particular diploma. Um, as Darren and Mace mentioned, it is a good thing to have on your CV as a fleet manager. Um, and you can, you know, if you can provide evidence that you can uh, manage people, you can manage budgets, you're always thinking about continuous improvement and in the fleet space, that's obviously a massively big thing for us. Um, it certainly goes a long way if you're looking at progressing your career. I guess that's enough from me. I, I'd like to um, pass you on now to another uh, graduate of the program. I believe uh, Joel, who just completed it last year online, so different experience to myself. Uh, I'll hand over to you, Joel. Uh, thanks, Dave. Excellent. Um, so just, I guess, the reason why I chose this course um, I was looking for a bit of a pathway into a management role um, in which the course absolutely provides that competency to do that. But after doing the course, I realised that, you know, the skills, the tools, the confidence you get from these different modules, um, you know, will assist in any aspect of your workplace today. You know, if you've been in the industry for a couple of years um, and we're all about continuous improvement, um, so it doesn't really matter what stage you are at your career, this course will definitely assist. So, um, you know, it's been a big attribute to, to myself and to the CFA of what I've learnt and implemented. So, um, you know, the five key modules, you know, and having a fleet focus through AFMA, um, as we had to do our course for my course last year, um, all online, some of the great sessions we did have um, you know, it wasn't Darren just going through slides, you know, he provided a lot of great examples. And then we had opportunities in, you know, separate work groups or breakout sessions, you know, to talk about a problem amongst ourselves. Um, and I met many great people, so, you know, from different parts of, of the industry and what they've, what challenges they've had with vehicles and, and big fleets. So, um, you know, having that focus has, has been fantastic. So a couple of key highlights for me, 
uh, or from the modules was you know, managing risk and compliance, which is a big thing working for a government organisation. So very mindful of that and having that at the forefront of your mind was very uh, um, a significant benefit to me. Um, continuous improvement, we spoke about that and how you can engage your team to, to continually look at ways to improve, being more efficient. Uh, there's no point wasting time on a certain you know, form if it's not going to lead to somewhere. So that was that was a great session. Um, a leading effective workplace relationships, you know, what's important to me, what's important to you, how can we compromise, what's about win-win. Um, as Darren said before, I think everyone really enjoys emotional intelligence. Um, that whole saying, you know, you need to get along to get ahead. Um, you know, it reiterates that confidence of how you're dealing with people and yourself um, to really get the best out of, out of yourself. Um, and then the project. The project had really tangible outcomes for, for, for myself and, and for the CFA. My project was about working at heights for our mechanics. Um, so there's been significant, you know, safety improvements we've uh, implemented across the organisation and that has flowed on to other industries or other uh, fire agencies as well. So there's a real outcome from, from this project. So I thank you for, my, uh, for your time and I'll now pass it back to, to May. Thanks, Joel. Uh, appreciate that. I'm now just going to quickly progress this slide uh, to scholarships and then we'll get into the open discussion. So a number of AFMA's corporate partners, Entity Data, Petters, Suspension of Brakes, Geotab and Auto Roller provide 50% paid scholarships. Toyota for Business in conjunction with Toyota Fleet Management provide two scholarships that are 70% funded, one specifically for women in fleet and the second for young leaders um, under 30. Now, Whilst we've got suppliers that are funding these scholarships, the key focal point here is they're not involved in the assessment point. If you're interested in a scholarship, you complete uh, an application form which you send to AFMA. There's a committee at AFMA that actually based on the merits of the applications received will actually grant um, the, uh, the scholarship. So this, basically the suppliers are handing over the, the cash, um, but the full administration and the the awarding of the scholarships is done by AFMA, thereby maintaining the probity and the distance between the supplier and the recipient. Um, these scholarships aren't available for uh, suppliers. Uh, they're focused around fleet managers, uh, corporate fleet managers, corporate partners. Uh, enough said. Let's, um, if all of the speakers could turn their camera on and their um, mics on. We'll now get to the questions and I just want to apologise, uh, there's a few of you out there that haven't been able to hear. Uh, one of the responses came through was asking to log out and log back in. I hope that's resolved things. Um, when today we've had uh, something like 57 people is the maximum number of people we've had online. So let's uh, turn ourselves now to the first question. Um, and I, I guess I might ask Darren first. Well, actually, no, I'm going to ask um, Dave and Joel. So, how many hours on week per week, guys, would you spend on any one topic? Uh, if you're happy, Dave, so I'll, I'll start off. I had a bit of a think about this this morning. It's a it's a challenging question to to answer, but crudely speaking, if you like, um, every second weekend, I'll probably spend maybe three or so hours working through an assignment, working through a project. And one of the modules. So, if that is in your mind, call it you know three hours every second weekend. Um, I think that I think that's a relatively uh, achievable task. Yeah, Joel, I was um, I was very similar. Looking back, I would suggest each topic um, for completion for me took somewhere between four and four and a half hours. Um, and generally, with the um, because we were actually going into Swinburne, I think we had 10 contact days. We were we were given two assignments essentially when we would go in attendance and we'd take those home to complete them. Um, yeah, for me, for each topic, about four and a half hours. Yeah, okay, that's a, that's a good synopsis. And on top of, the, there are, so for each topic, there are 12 subjects to go through. You've got 12 assessment 
topics to do. So you're looking at four hours, four and a half hours per assessment topic. When it comes to the overall project, and this sort of gets into the next question, um, which is, are all units included in the workplace final project or only some? So the fact is that you use some of the elements. When you think about the topic, managing budgets and financial returns, if that's not part of your current role, the extent that that comes into your project is about calculating the return on investment um, when it comes to what the benefits of your project are going to bring to the organisation versus the cost of the course and the cost of you being out of time. So, um, Darren, you've got a, you've got any further opinion on that question? Look, the idea of the project is very much that it is the application of everything that you learn. So one of the units you have is actually project management. So that's what you're assessed against for the project. Um, you're also partly assessed against the Communicate with the Influence project. Having said that, for the other 10, they all dovetail into being able to deliver the project. So when it comes to managing budgets or man managing risk, they're all part of the project. Uh, there is, and obviously then the leadership and operational aspects, continuous improvement that Joel talked about, all dovetails into the project. So it's a nice, to use the, the term almost capstone or, or top off um, for, the, uh, for the program where you bring it all together uh, at the end as well. So certainly that's, whilst you're only assessed against one to two units, it actually does cover off all the units within the program. So I guess it's like a piece of rope. Each of the subjects are uh, seeing individual twines that come together to give you the, the full course and the full experience. I might just quickly jump to, um, I'm going to elevate one of the questions if my mouse ever comes back to me. And uh, how is the project defined? And quickly, the, the fact is most of the projects come from uh, projects you may have already sitting on the back burner within your organisation or within your own um, um, backlog of work. Um, Darren, do you want to, to go a little bit further on um, the definition yes. of the projects? We've seen some very different projects over the uh, the 30 odd people we've had successfully complete the cohorts. Oh, 100%. And that's, that's the diversity of the the cohorts that we've had. Obviously, if you're working for an FMO versus Joel at the CFA versus uh, Dave, who was at the um, Melbourne City Council, obviously the projects are very different. Um, they're defined by you as the participant and what's going to deliver you the best return on investment for your organisation. So the, at no stage will I say, this is the project you must do. It's got to be one that comes from your organisation, as May said, um, but also have the support of the leadership of your organisation as well to make it easier for you to, to deliver, but also that it aligns with the overall organisational objectives, whatever they are. So it, definitely the project is yours and yours to deliver and yours to deliver a return back to your organisation. Um, Joel, I can see, I know what your one is very specific to, to the CFA um, without giving away too much, but certainly, you know, you can probably talk about the process and how you came up with defining that project. Yeah, so Darren, so I spoke with my management um, of a couple of ideas and we you know, worked those through what's achievable within that kind of time frame and what is tangible, what is actually, you know, we're not going to do a project for project's sake, we actually want to achieve something. So, um, you know, working for a government organisation, we don't have that monetary transaction. So how can we improve a process? Or in my case, how can we improve safety and the welfare for our people? So, um, you know, it was a fantastic project and tapped into all the skills of the course of engaging stakeholders and. How can we do things better? Um, and then, you know, we're, we're transitioned through. So, um, you know, as I said, the project has actually gone on to, to share it with other fire uh, organisations around the country. Yeah, Joel's was an excellent one, very specific to his needs, um, but uh, yeah, it was an excellent project and well done. Thank you. And um, Darren, do you want to jump on this next question around, are there pathways to a postgraduate course? There are. Um, you could step into a grad cert, uh, which would then step into a, into a master's. So the answer is yes, uh, well and truly. Um, and certainly with Swinburne, uh, there's some there's some great opportunities that we have uh, to step into postgraduate courses. And should you want to do that, and I think we've had um, a couple um, over the journey that have, have certainly have inquired about going down that path. So the answer the answer is definitely yes. Um, and someone like a, a Simone would be more than happy to to have a chat to you about that as well from from Swinburne as well. 
Yeah, I think when you have any further questions from the course guys, if you uh, can direct them to me personally or info at AFMA, we've got some uh, numbers will come up at the end of the course, but uh, mm. we can talk you through all of these various options. Um, yep. Darren, you might take the next question as well in regards to the course during working hours or evenings. Yeah, so the delivery of the course is done during working hours. Um, so we'll do uh, sort of one day, I'm just looking at the calendar, about one day per month uh, between March and November, uh, and then that covers us off. Um, I think there's another question down there about being run online. The answer is yes, in terms of contactless. The last one we ran entirely contactless. Uh, one thing that we are looking at doing for this year is if we can, uh, but of course, um, being in this COVID environment, this is always flexible, is can we run part of the one of the elements face-to-face, uh, -face, which will be around the AFMA conference as well and tying into that. So I, we will run it 100% online. If people can make it into the room for that particular um, that particular day, that'd be fantastic if we're allowed to do it based upon what it will be COVID normal at that time. Just one yeah, quick one. Like we did have... Sorry, mate. Last year we did have someone from Brisbane, someone from uh, Adelaide. So yeah, we were yep. in state. Yeah, one hundred percent. So um, yeah, it is a national program, um, and it is a national qualification as well. Yeah, so it's, it, it gets a little harder to bring people together when we've got people all over the country. Um, that the conference is a, is a great opportunity because any of the uh, the, the people participating get. Uh, very reduced rates to attend the conference um, because it's great to provide that opportunity for everyone to be able to network, especially we're in this virtual world we live at the moment. We have a couple of people registered from WA and a couple of people registered from Brisbane already uh, into this uh, planned cohort. Um, okay, let's talk about the format. Darren, it's coming back to you again. Um, so we do have a, I see there's questions here about textbooks. Effectively what we do have um, is we run them on as live webinars. Joel's already mentioned, I think one of the things that we really tried to do last year because we run it online is to, is to run um, uh, part of the sessions as uh, I suppose development sessions or um, collaboration sessions where you guys can collaborate and build networks and build relationships across the group. So what there is, there is a, a sense of, I suppose you've got some, some theory we've got to go to, some concepts. We'll talk about those. We'll talk about the application of those and then you'll get some collaboration time online to, to work together to come up with, as I think Joel used the term, mini, mini projects to, to work through that. So they are done um, online. There is PowerPoint presentations and workbooks and textbooks to support you. Uh, we run a, a system or a learning management system called Canvas uh, and everything is located on that. Uh, generally, we use uh, Zoom as the, um, the format for the video conferencing there as well. Um, from my point of view, is try and make it as interactive as possible uh, in the online forum as well. Because at the end of the day, it's not just, I think Joel mentioned this and David as well, it's not just about me talking for, Eight days. It's also uh, it's also about um, you guys learning off each other, peer to peer learning, but also building those networks uh, as well, which is important in our industry as well. Um, this next question is: There a cohort forum available? So, what? Um, I'm not sure what that was meant. So, do you guys have a closed networking group, Darren, on Canvas that where the group can talk amongst themselves? Um, even when they're not online? Yeah, I think one thing we did with a, a Sydney cohort a couple of years ago is we did do have a WhatsApp group, um, which I think is something that I'd like to redo. We probably weren't as formal last year because we met quite regularly uh, online. Um, but certainly, yeah, I, my belief is is uh, WhatsApp group. Otherwise, it was done probably, Joel, uh, probably more a little bit more informally on email and phone calls and the like there as well. Plus, I you had that time to collaborate as well. Yeah, I think so. You know, one of the benefits of getting all online is that the sessions are broken up uh, more frequently. Um, so yeah. rather than having to come together and spend two or three days together, we're we're actually touching each other and, and connecting much more frequently, which is a great thing. So um, yeah. I think that's been a, one of the the positive learnings from moving to a, an online basis. I'm conscious that we're now one minute overdue, so I'm just going to cut to some of the the costs here. So are there any uh, other than cost, there are no other expenses beyond the course cost. Um, there is mm -hmm. no need, to, unless of course we were doing um, 
some sort of face-to-face -face at the conference, um, then you would have obviously additional costs in regards to your travel to the conference and uh, a small conference fee. Uh, let's talk about assessments, knowledge-based questions as well as projects. Um, Darren, do you want to touch on that? Yes, there are some knowledge-based questions as well as some, uh, I use the term workplace application or work-based work based, um, uh, questions. Um, and in terms of being clustered or it separately, some are clustered um, and some are, are done separately as well, predominantly are done separately per unit. Okay, uh, an important question here is, what happens if we cannot complete the course within the eight months? Um, the, the fact is that uh, it's essential that this course be completed and you uh, finish your project in what will be early, late November um, and we plan to graduate you in mid-December because after 2021, uh, Swinburne courses are all going through a total rebuild. So 2022, will, the course content will look um, different. Probably four or five topics might be uh, different in format and uh, making it impossible for you not to complete. Um, Darren, do you have anything further to add on that response? Yeah, it is actually a national change to the total qualifications framework that occurs at the start of um, 2022. So you will have to have it completed by the end of this year. And that goes for anyone starting any diploma with any organisation this year. As well. And um, when we talked about how many people undertake each year, we've generally had between 10 and 12 people undertake the, the, uh, the diploma each year. Last year, we had three participants that uh, dropped out halfway through who will pick up the back half this year. Their organisation had some challenges with COVID and some other things and uh, so those guys will jump back into this year's cohort. So we're hoping uh, to have a cohort uh, of around 12 or 13 people this year. And uh, the final question is, yes, you'll get a copy of the presentation afterwards. This session has been recorded. Um, you'll have access to the recording. We'll provide you information around uh, the proposed dates or working schedule throughout the year, provide you a bit more blurb on each of the core subjects, and we'll also provide you uh, some other supporting information around um, the course and its uh, return on investment, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So um, what I will say is that if you have any questions, uh, direct them to myself and it's simply mace.hartley at afma.org.au or the generic box which is info at afma.org.au. The office number is uh, 03 for Melbourne 9866 6056. The cohort will start at the end of March and uh, once again there are scholarships available so if you like any information give us a call. Thank you uh, for everyone for your time today. I especially uh, thank Darren Holland for making himself available, Dave Allen and Joel Reed, previous uh, graduates for their valuable feedback. Um, thank you all for, for taking the time. Apologies for the overrun at 12.34 and uh, at, the, at the peak we had 57 people on the call. I look forward to speaking to all of you and responding to your questions as need be. Uh, once again, thank you for AFMA's corporate partners Pettis Suspension and Brakes, NTT Data Victory Systems, BP, Auto Roller, Geotab and Redbook. Take care and we'll speak to you.